Hi, um, my name is Charlotte Bzhevsky. I'm going to talk about um, innovation within the museum and it will kind of examine how certain institutions, well, particularly museums, um, can develop an innovative practice while providing a historical context to visitors. Um, I'll look especially at working museums and um, I'm particularly focused on one museum in the, um, which I'll go into in Estonia where I work which is uh, originally was called the Estonian Paper and Printing Museum but now has changed its name to Taipa. Um, and I had hoped to talk more about the Woods Book Art Museum but I also uh, noticed that Alexandra was coming before but unfortunately she hasn't made it. But anyway, um, so yeah, and this is a uh, kind of, well, I'll just start. Um, so this is uh, my background is um, I'm a current PhD student in uh, the University of Wrocław uh, in digital and experimental pr uh, printmaking. But I have a background in letterpress. Uh, in 2016, I led an interdisciplinary, well, in intergenerational Skillshare um, letterpress workshop where I took people who were from the industry to teach uh, a group of people who are my age or coming to letterpress as new people who had small understandings of it and together we printed a large collaborative piece about the history of letterpress in Bristol. Um, so I got to see firsthand like the importance of some of the things that we've been talking about in education uh, the importance of learning sort of manual skills and uh, the wonder of letterpress through these eyes. Um, but I also did learn that I really hate carrying cases of lead type up and down three stories. Um, and also I was so excited about this project and wanted it to go so well that I didn't tell the other participants that I was sneaking in like four hours early to, you know, make sure the type was kind of ready because it all kept dragging on and dragging on. Um, and then in 2017, I was an artist of residence at the Estonian Paper Muse Print Museum in Tartu, um, where I have come to start working and is part of this new um, project, which I'm, where I'm going on to talk. So this isn't a, this isn't um, a map of a virus outbreak or anything. This is um, a map of European printing museums from the Association of European Printing Museums. Uh, and it's just a demonstration of the growth of Letterpress and this group of, like, um, of museums which are rising up across Europe and across the world. Um, and these are studios, libraries, archives, um, and and within this are many examples of sort of working museums. So the International Council of Museums guidelines on, only sort of touches upon working museums as something, and it's something which these museums have to define in their own practice, what is a working museum. Um, uh, Amelia before was talking earlier about the importance of, um, of um, you know, using an archive and using their resources um, and putting them into practice. And also within Letterpress, there is a lot of talk about um, the machinery needing to be used uh, as a way of working. You know, old Letterpress equipment must be in use always. It's a way of maintaining your archives. And it's also great for um, education as well. So, um, sorry, this is just a picture. <laughs> Many times you hear, so. Um, uh, the way that letterpress can be used um, with, um, sorry, one minute, I need a minute. <laughs> um, the way sort of letterpress can be used to strengthen communities and promote learning. Um, Catherine Dixon mentioned yesterday the 6x6 letterpress project in the UK. And also we, have, we do have examples of this in museums across the country. We have the Dublin Printing Muse National Print Museum. Um, who run like many, many outreach projects, you know, adult learning, school education projects, and they also involve people who used to work in the industry as well in teaching new skills to young people. However, in this sort of new research project I'm looking into, it's, it's evaluating whether it is possible to run an Operation Print Museum, but also within this context 
um, create innovative practices and provide a space for innovation to exist and how this can be done. So, as I mentioned, I'm currently working at what is now known as Typer. It's a museum, but also a working studio in Estonia, in Tartu. So it was formerly known as the Estonian Print and Paper Museum, um, but changed its name to incorporate all the activities that it does. So it has a working paper studio with paper making. We have um, a great collection of printing equipment, linotypes, monotype casters, um, you know, Heidelbergs, cylinder presses, um, but every piece of equipment is set out to be used. Um, and we have, um, um, yeah, and we produce books and do outreach and workshops and stuff as well. But um, some of the things that I wanted to say about it being particularly, like, the reasons and what makes it innovative is um, the people that come through it. So we have, it's not just the staff who've been working there for ages. Like, I'm really new. I start next week, but um, <laughs> it's um, the people who, um, they also run a, a volunteer a European volunteer service with the European Solidarity Corps and also Erasmus. And these are the sort of volunteers that come in maybe for one year or one and a half or six months and often don't have any experience of print and really bring something new to the museum. Then we have to, to about two a year um, of one year of volunteers and, with, and also short, more short term ones. Um, so we have Rosé who was experimenting during her time with. Uh, pinhole cameras and um, analog photography and how to develop photography with um, you know homemade coffee and vitamin C mixed formulas and we also had Liza from Italy who made um, paper uh, with seeds embedded into it and found a way of printing onto this paper without the seeds destroying the type or <laughs> the type smashing open the seeds so it's things like this which really kind of give these spaces new energy. Um, and then also it runs a artist in residence program, which is really exciting, where artists can come in and use the space. So um, I wanted to give a couple of examples of previous artists. This is Peter Vance, who is from the UK, is from the UK. Um, and he's a sort of sound artist and an engineer. And during his time, he created um, these frames where he wound around um, he wound around ribbons, or like long strips of fabric even. And then he created, and he laser cut these frames, and he then laser cut the letters. And he printed uh, the whole alphabet onto these different frames. So he had one for each letter. And he then unwound it, and he took it, and from the unwound strips, he wound them back onto with these other frames, and he read them as music notes which he then put through a computer program and he composed a piece of music from it, which I can have and I can show you guys later if you're interested, come and find me. And he also put this back into an artwork. So he went into the exhibition and you had this soundtrack that he'd built playing and these, art, these um, new ways of looking at letters, which someone from a graphics department background or someone as a printer would never ever consider. And it was a way of like bringing it not only through analog to digital and everything like that, but just across all mediums. Um, another artist who I, is Haruko Yamada from Tokyo. And unfortunately, I was emailing her for ages. Um, and finally, she got back to me this morning and said, yeah, I'll send you images of my work tomorrow. I was like, oh. So if you're around tomorrow, I can show you them. <laughs> But she um, was interested in one of our newest pieces of equipment, which is a AHZ pre-proof camera, um, which was used for creating sort of film negatives from for magazine mock cups. And she was, and one thing that this camera can do is it can ex, it can um, do really big zooms or really, like you know, what's the word, expand and decrease the image. 
um, greatly. So she was taking small, she found small pieces of paper from notes, printed ephemera from around the museum, and she blew these up into these giant prints. Uh, and it was a really exciting way for us to play around with not the camera, but this format as well. And it's not just like finding new innovative practices. Um, this is uh, Daniel Schneider and Bonnie Lucas from Michigan. And they were looking at um, our type collection and our wooden type collection. And they were particularly interested in something I haven't heard before, which is tufas. Way is an American term. I don't know, you guys probably know it. I'd never heard of it before. <laughs> where you've, if in a print house you've run out of letters, you can carve the other side into the other side and create a new letter. So they went through our collection, um, in particular a collection of Soviet types, of Russian Cyrillic types, and they were looking for printed examples of this. And this was something that we'd seen, obviously, in the museum, and we had some small understanding, but they could bring a lot more to it, and they created this printed book of it. And also, during tours, we'd talk to our visitors and explain this part, and it was something that we, in our collection, had never considered. So it's, just, it's like, it's been, like, I think the Artists in Residence program like this is another really strong example of what artists can bring to a museum, and new ways that they can approach a museum collection, which maybe you haven't considered before, which inevitably feeds off into your visitors. Um, and so I did, this isn't from, huh? oh no, actually I just had to mention behind all of these projects, there's always this one of these guys, like all women, or someone who knows the whole process. This is Jürgen Lute, the technician there, and he's someone who just knows how to do everything, and a bit of like a Greg Walker's, comes in, no fear, knows how to like operate all these machineries, and, um, yeah, just needs that recognition. So it's kind of like another reason why these museum spaces are great is because you have not just all these equipment and tools, um, but you also have the people behind it who know how to use it. So I did write in my abstract a lot about the Artist Book Museum in Woods, but I had hoped that um, Distort Visual, who were on two before me, or meant to be, would be talking more and elaborating more about there. So I kind of only touched upon one project that I found really interesting that they were doing. And that's um, a project between, well, who used to be the technician there, which is Krzysztof um, Swihaj and uh, John Cornelissi, um, who um, have developed a um, interface for the monotype caster, which uses um, a Raspberry Pi and a built sort of solenoid system so you can bypass using the tapes. And the whole thing is really well documented on Christoph's um, GitHub, which is a website where you can put all your code. He's put down the schematics. He's uploaded like the whole project throughout it. And it's something that I think that um, us as letterpresses can learn from this sort of hacker community is this documentation online. Like, it's something like, if you look at, like, the whole thing, the whole project has been shared, and it's something that really spurs on innovation. Um.